Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, nice to see some of you in person as well as those online. Um, just a quick note for those of you in the room, if you've got the event app on your phone, please make sure you've got that ready and available for this session because we will be doing some polls and things like that during the session. So it just helps to collate your information with those online and pull it all together. So welcome to the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. So this is the main sort of general college welcome session. Um, there are a couple of other sessions that will be held after this. So there is a session for those of you who are enrolled in the creative arts that's in conjunction with TAFE. So that's costume design, fashion and visual arts students. So that will be happening straight after this session in this room. And then there's also a session for those of you enrolled into the Creative Arts V, so Visual um, Effects and Entertainment Design, and that will be happening in a room up near the college front at 12.30. So we will take you there if you are in one of those sessions. Um, but essentially today in this session, we'll be covering some of the, um, I guess, foundational sort of stuff for starting a university um, degree um, and some stuff that's more specific to our particular college as well. At the end, we are also going to have a bit of a student panel. So we've got real live students, current students here, that you can pick their brains, ask them some questions about, you know, what some study tips, all those sorts of things. Um, so you can ask them those questions. And then also tacked on to the end of this session, we are gonna take you to the college front. So you can see kind of a nice space that you can use throughout your degree and a bit of a light lunch and chance to kind of mix and mingle a bit. Um, so to begin with, my name is Eliza Kitchen. So hello. <laughs> um, I am a lecturer for tourism and events. So if you are doing that degree, you'll see me quite a bit. Um, but I'm also a, the, a, um, a part of the college in terms of being a student success and engagement coordinator, I guess you can call me. Um, so I do sort of care about all students in terms of progressing and succeeding through their degree. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's who I am. Um, you'll meet a few other people throughout um, this session as well. Um, but yes, I'll introduce them at a later point. But before I go too far, it is really important that we do acknowledge that we are meeting on Ghana land. Um, so we do want to pay respects to the traditional owners of this land. Um, and pay respect to the elders of this land from the past, present and also emerging leaders. Um, and I noticed yesterday there was quite a great um, welcome to country and smoking ceremony. Was anyone here at that session? Yeah, it was really amazing. I actually watched it on, on Instagram because Flinders, um, Flinders have a really good page, Hey Flinders. So if you have Instagram, follow Hey Flinders and you get lots of great live things like that. Um, it just reminds you that these things are happening. Oh, look at this, isn't that cool? Um, but yeah, it was really important and really kind of nice to see a lot of people showing up for that particular activity. And I think that was really well done. And um, particularly for our college, you know, we do have Indigenous studies within our college. So we have some really great um, staff within that area that cover a lot of the knowledges of the First Nations people. Um, but even if you're not doing those topics, I think a lot of us also integrate a lot of First Nations culture and knowledge into a lot of our other topics as well. Um, so I mentioned we're on Ghana land, but of course we do operate across various different areas as well as Flinders University. And for those of you online as well, you may be coming to us from a different land as well. So you're welcome to add into the live Q&A for those of you online if you are joining us from another land as well. Or you may be tra have travelled or lived elsewhere around Australia and also want to acknowledge those lands too. So this is O Week. You're here, which is great. Um, next week there is also Connect Week, which is a really great opportunity to really get to know some of the different organisations around um, the university, get to know some of the different associations and clubs and all of those sorts of things. So I will mention that in a little bit more detail later too. So I mentioned we are the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. We're one of six colleges in the university. Um, and at this point, I want to introduce you to our Dean of Education. So the Dean of Education in every, every, um, 
College, and our Dean of Education is the wonderful Associate Professor Chris Natalia. So I'm just going to introduce you to her for a few words. Hello, everybody, and welcome to... I'm going to take my glasses off. No, I'm going to do this, okay, so I can read my notes and I can also see you, which makes me look like a very grumpy grandmother, but I'm actually quite nice. So, welcome to the College of Humanities and Arts and Social Sciences. Um, I just want to let you know, first and foremost, that um, our aim is to work with you and our aim is to work with you to understand the world and to change it for the better. So that's our key focus, that's why we're here and that's what drives us. Now folks, I'm happy to inform you that you have landed in the college that has been ranked by Good Universities Guide in 2022 as number one in South Australia in undergraduate creative arts for full-time employment, learner engagement, skills development, student support and teaching quality. There's more. Number one in South Australia in undergraduate humanities, culture and social sciences for full-time employment, median salary, overall education experience and skills development. And also number one in South Australia in undergraduate communications, and that's for overall education experience, skills development, student support and teaching quality. And also, also number one in South Australia in undergraduate tourism, hospitality, sport and leisure. Congratulations, beautiful Eliza, for full-time employment, skills development, student support and teaching quality. And also, we have received five stars in creative arts for learner engagement, learning resources, skills development and teaching quality. Now look folks, I just want to say we're quite proud of these achievements and the reason we're proud of them is not because, you know, we're kind of, we don't get a medal or anything, we're not on a, a proper ranking, um, I mean it's a proper ranking but, you know, we're not sort of sitting, sitting somewhere where you can see it. The reason that we're really proud of this is because it tells us that we are doing a really good job of supporting the people who matter most at Flinders and the people who matter most at Flinders are our students. The people who matter most at Flinders are you. And I really, really want you to keep that in mind. And I also want to tell you that we are even more proud of the achievements of our educators. And these aren't so easily captured in the rankings. So as members of our college community, you'll be working with people who are researchers and practitioners, people who are committed to sharing their expertise to inspire and enrich your learning, and people who care about you. So we have people who are creating performances with youth um, theatre groups who are working with the Australian Theatre for Young People and developing a musical. We've got people who are touring um, musicals written with um, a Liberian-Australian composer called James Banner Jr. And for the youth among you, the Triple J unearthed um, R&B star um, Elsie Wameo. I have no idea who that is because I only listen to country and western playlists, but... Sounds pretty damn good. We've got people who are establishing theatre companies. We've got people who are running their own screen production businesses. We've got people who are writing um, best-selling and prize-winning novels and short stories. We've got people who are partnering with schools to figure out how to teach young people about sex and gender and safety. We've got people who have actually changed abortion laws in South Australia through their activism. We've got people who are tracking the impacts of climate change on the coasts and on everyday lives. We've got people who are shaping public debate about fascism and Nazism and the war in Ukraine. We've got people who are writing about Jane Austen if she was a vampire also. So something for everyone, literally. Um, we've got people who are rethinking what films and what books matter for different groups in Australia. We've got people who are keeping languages alive in South Australia. We've got people who are thinking about what it means to live a good life, to live an ethical life, what it means to be happy. We've got people who are working with the UN on what wellbeing means and how could we begin to measure that. We've got people who are working to build sustainable tourism in developing countries. We've got people who are trying to figure out how to create sustainable and vibrant um, festivals and events that reflect what matters for different communities. We've got a bunch of um, scuba diving archaeologists, you might have seen their picture on some of the Flinders advertising, who dive underwater and who have found sites that have been forgotten. 
um, off the coasts of northwestern Australia. We've got people who are working with traditional owners of country to trace changes and continuities in its use and its meaning, finding artefacts, finding the most beautiful, um, beautiful rock art and always in um, collaboration with traditional owners. And we've got wonderful academics who are putting Indigenous knowledges and histories front and centre in terms of what it means to live in Australia, to study in Australia and to be here on Ghana land. So I'll share with you too that all of this expertise and all of this passion and all of this interest and all of this achievement has been built through missteps and failings, through getting things wrong and through learning what we don't know and asking, asking, asking when we don't know. So the people who do this amazing work, they're lovely people, I work closely with them and I can guarantee you that not a single one of them has not at some stage royally screwed something up. Okay, And that's true of all of us. So I failed a topic in my first semester at university. I failed a topic in my last semester at law and that was before I changed to a Bachelor of Arts, which I'd always wanted to do but I thought it'd be a Bachelor of Laws was more sensible but clearly not because I hated it and then sort of had to change halfway through. Um, I spent half of the first semester of my university um, career not knowing where the books were in the library and too afraid to ask. There was kind of a hidden staircase. They're up on the second floor. Which is to say that learning is fun and learning is exciting and learning is sometimes hard. And learning at university, which, look, is, can, can be a pretty strange place, is also fun and is also exciting and is also sometimes hard as well. So when we talk about learning, what we're, what we're talking about is starting not knowing much and then working to understand more. That's what learning is and that's why you're here and that's what everyone here who works at the college does every single day. So what that means is that there's no shame in not knowing, there's no shame in needing guidance or advice, there's no shame in asking, okay? That's part of the process, that's what we're here to do. It's what we all do every single day. And these beautiful people here will attest to the fact that I ask questions of them every single day. And I'd screw up maybe two or three times a day too, on average, I'd say. <laughs> it's part of the process. It's what we do. And so I'm saying this because I want you to feel comfortable in your learning process. I want you to feel comfortable when you don't understand something. And I want you to realise that because you're part of a community, a community of learners, and that includes students and academics and professional staff, asking anything at all is part of the journey and part of the process. And it's something that we're here to do um, with you. So what we're here to do is help you have a meaningful and useful and engaging time in your studies. So I guess in conclusion, folks, welcome. Welcome to our community. Enjoy your successes, embrace your confusions, and just have a fine old time. Thank you for listening. Perfect. Thank you very much for that, Chris. Um, so yes, we are quite a diverse, I think, college. But we're definitely the coolest, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> it has been acknowledged across the board. Um, but yeah, we do some amazing things and it's really quite cool different areas um, in amongst um, our college as well. And I think just to kind of highlight this as well, um, we've got a little poll that we're gonna start now. So if you've got your event app, make sure you've got that up there. Um, because what you might not have known at the time, you signed up for a degree, you didn't necessarily know you were in this college, and you might not necessarily know all the different degrees that kind of fall under, whoop, I went too far, fall under our college. Um, so what we'd like to know now is find out a little bit more about you guys and which degree you're enrolled into. Um, you'll notice most of these are um, undergraduate options. So if you are a postgraduate student, you can select the postgraduate course option as well. So I'll give you a, a moment or two to do that. And I've got the lo my lovely assistant Sam over here, <laughs> off camera for those of you online. 
and I can see, okay, quite a few creative arts students, which is awesome. Uh, quite a few postgrad, archaeology, creative industries, arts, perfect. So quite um, a broad kind of range um, of representation here in the room. Um, and hopefully once we move to the college front, those of you who are here in person will be able to mix and mingle and hopefully meet someone else from, from your degree as well. Um, so in the next few slides, I am going to go through, I guess, what happens next in your university career. Because so far you've signed up to a degree and you're probably thinking, okay, cool, I've done that, managed to get that far, what happens next? And I think that's often the bit that, you know, there's uncertainties and, and kind of issues, that you, sort of concerns that you might be expressing at the moment. So we just kind of want to try and alleviate some of those fears or concerns that you might have. Um, but first of all, kind of echoing the sentiments of Chris, start off by saying, well done for getting here in the first place. You know, you are at the very beginning of your learning journey for higher ed. And it is a really exciting point because you can explore, you can discover, you can follow your passions. So some of you may be starting thinking you know exactly where you're going in future. Others may be joining thinking, well, I know a rough kind of area of where I want to go, but I don't know. Let's just see what happens. I was very much in that category when I started university. I went, oh, I like tourism events. Let's just see what happens. Um, and here I am. <laughs> don't know how that happened, but yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a really exciting time. It gives you that chance to expand your horizons, um, explore what you might want to do in the future. It is a chance to make mistakes, to learn from these mistakes as well. But we're really excited to have you joining our learning community. And again, we don't like to differentiate between academics and students. You are part of our learning community. A lot of your lecturers will have, you know, be very passionate about their particular area. And we just love having students to talk to about these things. Um, so we're hoping you kind of join us in those conversations as well. Now, I have another poll for you um, because we also acknowledge that not everyone is coming from the same place. So we just want to kind of get a bit of a handle on, on where you guys are coming from, whether it's secondary school, whether it's TAFE or transferring from another degree or potentially from, from industry and working. So just take a moment. Okay. So I can see already by the early answers to the poll, we've got quite a, people, quite a few people joining us from working. Um, few from secondary school and some transferring from another degree. Um, and it's really important to know this because everyone is starting from <clears throat> a slightly different place. Everyone has a slightly different story, different strengths, different weaknesses. And so it is necessary to kind of think about that as you're starting your journey. You know, you're not exactly the same as the person sitting near you. You're all experiencing slightly different things and you're going to come across various different challenges along the way. And we know that the transition to university studies can be a little bit daunting. Um, I myself witnessed my, my eldest daughter starting primary school this year. And there were definitely fears, there were concerns, going into a new environment with new people. And I think it's, it's the same for university level as well. We just don't show our fears as much as a five-year-old. <laughs> Um, we tend to kind of contain them a little bit more. Um, so whilst you may be looking at people in, in your seminars or lecturers thinking, oh, they've got this, you know, they're so much more on board than I am, just be mindful that underneath you're probably having similar sort of feelings and ideas as well. Um, because, yeah, there are some challenges um, that, that come with starting university studies and there will be new things to adapt to um, so just take your time. You don't have to know everything to begin with. You know, it's a learning experience, like Chris said. You get to know things over time. Um, and it's definitely not a race. So you may think, well, I've signed up to a three-year degree. Got to get it done in three years. Things happen along the way. If it takes you slightly longer, that's absolutely fine. So just be, be gentle with yourself, basically. <laughs> don't think 
they, you have to get everything done right the first time and get through it at the right sort of timelines. Everyone is completely different in this journey. Um, so to talk about some of the different experiences and interactions you might have at university, I think we have moved away from the online kind of platforms this semester. We are trying to do things face-to-face -face as much as possible. However, if we do have online classes and things like that, they generally run through a platform called Collaborate. So if you haven't used it already, try and get used to it before classes start, familiarise yourself with it. Um, but a lot of classes will be face-to-face -face, and you can easily tell that on your timetable if there is a physical space kind of attributed to your session, that's where you'll be. Um, and again, some of the different terms we use, so we have lectures, so that's generally where you've got the whole topic um, cohort all together. Um, and then you have seminars where you might have smaller groups, you know, 20 to 25 students max in these little seminar sessions, a lot more interaction, and you'll have a lot more discussion with, with your tutor for that particular case. Um, so it's really kind of important to really involve yourself with these sessions. Um, and as well as academic staff, like your lecturers, topic coordinators, tutors, our professional staff members are really important for what we do here as well. So you may find that you get to know our course and enrolment advisors quite well, but we also have lots of different support services across the university. Again, um, Connect Week is a really good opportunity to find out a little bit more about each of these different services. And really importantly, your peers are going to be a really key part of your experience. So it's not just about going to classes and exploring your chosen field. It Try and engage in the full experience of university. It's, it's that one time in your life where you do have the most flexibility in your life. So try and engage with all of we've got to offer here at university. Okay, so to mix things up a bit, we've got a little competition. So there is actually a prize. Um, so for this, again, I'll get you to get your events app out. And for this one, you can write in the live Q&A box. I'll reveal the question in a minute. I just want to make sure everyone knows where they're going with that. Um, so you can use the live Q&A box. And the first person to write the right answer in Get surprise. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the question is, what does HASS stand for? <laughs> well, super quick. <laughs> oh my god, there's lots of right answers. <laughs> you have to determine who's first. Jasmine S. <laughs> Jasmine S, woo, well done. So we'll be in touch with you about the prize. Um, so well done. It's almost a test of who can type the quickest in a way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'd like to add in some fun stuff like that. Um, so yeah, going back to, to some of these really important people in our college, um, I just thought I'd bring your attention to some of our student administrative services staff that we have here in our college. So for those of you online, you can see the pictures. For you, those of you in this space, you can see them lovely over here. So we've got Joe and Annie, who are our enrolment and course advisors. And then we've also got Carolyn, who is coordinator of enrolment and student progress. So what I would suggest, you may meet these people in person later on at some point, but if you do have any queries around um, course enrolments and things like that, the best kind of method is to put in an Ask Flinders request because it makes sure that your request goes to the right sort of person because they are responsible for slightly different degrees and all that sort of thing. So to make sure your request and question goes to the right person, do use Ask Flinders. And they are readily available when you do need them. <laughs> I'm add adding to your schedule already. <laughs> um, so... I guess one of the key things that we get asked is what, what, is my, what am I expected to do once I get to, to university? And hopefully for those of you who are in the room, you collected a little bit of a sheet, a sheet um, or a handout on the way in that it's a bit of a checklist 
that you can go through. And if you're anything like me, I love a checklist because it makes you feel like you're achieving something. You get to do that tick. You go, oh, okay, I'm ready, I'm prepared, I'm organised, ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to quickly run through this, um, but you can refer to that um, handout later on. And this session is also going to be recorded as well, so you can refer back to this later. Uh, so in terms of resources, it's making sure that you do have what you need to get by with your university studies. So things like a laptop or computer, or at least knowing that you can access the computers here on campus, things like that. Um, knowing you've got internet, good internet connection, especially if you've got classes. Sometimes I just come to campus because it's more reliable, sometimes than at home. Um, so if you do have you know, really important classes, you might want to consider that because um, over the last couple of years, I've seen lots of students drop in and out <laughs> of sessions because of that issue. Um, it's thinking about practical things like, can I get to university? Have I got that all figured out? Um, have I got my ID card? Um, and some of the areas that you'll be using for your studies do require special access. So a lot of your topic coordinators will give you more information in relation to that, um, but just be mindful that you may be needing to access extra spaces too. Uh, commitment, I think, is another key one. You know, we are real people and we know that you are real people as well. There's lots of things that are involved in our lives. You may not just be studying full time. You may have jobs, sports, hobbies, family commitments, all sorts. So we really just want to check that you do have a timetable that suits that. So you are being mindful of that. And if you do have any clashes with your classes, just let your topic coordinators know if there is a clash and you can't make certain sessions. Um, we also ask that you check your emails on a regular basis. So again, it, it's just kind of setting you up for good behaviours early on in your degree. Because I think if you've got that there to begin with, you kind of continue on with those habits throughout your degree, which puts you in good stead. And again, it's thinking about how you're going to act within the university space, making sure you are ready to engage, collaborate, because there are lots of great discussions that occur within the university space. So you want to get involved. Um, and I think, again, to reflect on what Chris was saying, it's also acknowledging that, you know, we are human. We make mistakes. You know, we want you to be resilient because it is part of learning and growing. Um, so if you do mess up, if you make mistakes, you know, you might get knocked down, but get right back up again, <laughs> to quote a 90s song. Um, you might be too young for that one. Um, but yeah, we want to make sure that you are aware of that, that it is perfectly normal. But in terms of learning, again, often the questions are, what am I expected to do? And again, it's trying to be as proactive as you can. So looking at your topic handbooks, even this week, you should have access to all your flow pages, Flinders Learning Online. Um, so you can have a look at your topic handbooks, have a look at the statement of assessment methods, and really get an understanding of what's required of you from the topic. Because there is a bit more independent learning. Um, you are having to take responsibility and put in your assessment dates and manage your own time and stuff like that. Um, so it's really just getting to know what some of those expectations are. Um, and communication, so if something does happen, absolutely contact your tutor if you can't make a seminar or your topic coordinator if it's a bigger issue relating to your topic involvement. We're here to help you. We're, we don't feel like you're pestering us or you know anything like that. Absolutely getting in contact because unless you let us know, we don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, be very ready to email your people and a lot of the contact details are up and available on Flow. Um, but when you do email your lecturers or tutors, make sure you do pop in what topic you're referring to, because a lot of us teach a number of different topics at the same time, so indicate which one. And I think you'll find you get a quicker response that way, because we can quickly go, oh, that's relating to this topic. Here we go, here's your answer. Um, so yeah, email from your, your Flinders account. And again, think about um, the fact that it is a professional kind of conversation you're having. Um, and then very lastly in this spreadsheet, we talk about 
you know, the support and personal circumstances. So again, it's thinking about being proactive, you know, make the most of, of O week, connect week. There is also going to be a skills week and a wellbeing week later on in the semester. Um, so make the most of that. Also, if you do have any um, special considerations or learning disabilities, you can request an access plan, which you can then forward on to your topic coordinators, which um, just outlines reasonable adjustments so we can help you learn better. So again, it's think, time to think about things like this. Make sure you've got all your ducks in a row. Quite appropriate for Flinders, I think, ducks in a row. Um, so yeah, basically getting everything sorted and ready and organised. Okay, so another poll for you. Just again, quickly mix it up a bit. Um, I think I've mentioned a couple of times the answer, but let's see if you can remember. So how many colleges are there at Flinders University? Oh, straight in. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> how are we going? We're getting three and six and five. Ooh. Six is prevailing. Okay. So, yes. The correct answer is six. <laughs> so, it's good to see the majority, I think. Yeah, got vast majority. Vast majority. There was got a that. four even after we've said six. So, I oh, hope okay. that that's just oh. a lag. <laughs> So majority are getting it right. And, and I mean, you may have topics within this college that you're doing, but you may also have topics within other colleges that you may um, enrol into in the future as well. So you may see various different people from different colleges. Um, so just to quickly go through what's going to happen next, because obviously next week is week one. So I'm thinking, what's going to happen then? This is generally when you have your first class or your first lecture for your topics. Um, so what I suggest at this point is to start getting yourself organised. Fill in your diary or your study planner. You might have got one of those big study planners from Flinders Connect. If not, go and grab one. Not right now, um, but later. Um, but start to familiarise yourself with some of the university services. And again, Connect Week is a really good opportunity for that. So the FUS is going to be running fair days where you get to meet some of the people from the associations and clubs. That's going to be next Monday, Tuesday. Um, but also, you know, visit the library, even if it's just online. Start familiarising yourself with, with some of these things. Oh, did I just? Oh, yes. Um, one of the other things that we are in development at the moment as well is trying to create a flow page for our whole college. Um, and that's really to be... I guess, a one-stop shop where you can find information about the college, um, links to study supports and all these different things. Also information about your college student reps as well as associations and stuff like that as well. So look out for that one. We'll start distributing that link next week. Um, and then week two, this is generally when your seminars start. So it gives us you a chance to kind of digest some of the information from week one lecture and then start to discuss and prepare for week two. So get involved, start to ask questions. Um, it's absolutely normal to ask all sorts of questions, we're used to it. Um, and get to know your classmates as well, because they're the people you may be seeing in various different topics as well. So hopefully by week three, we're starting to kind of settle in a little bit more. Um, you might be starting to work on your assessments a little bit more. So again, exploring different support services like the student learning support service is a really good thing to do. And again, it gives you the information of, of where to go, even if you're just sort of having a look on their site, identifying what kind of resources are available, what kind of workshops they run. So then when it comes to that point in your academic career where you're thinking, oh, I, I need a little bit more help about how to write an essay, you know where to go. Um, so at that point, you're not kind of struggling and thinking, where do I go for this? You should already know. So being proactive, I think, is a really kind of key thing to be doing. Um, and lastly, don't worry, I'm not going to go through like a whole semester's worth of, of weeks. <laughs> um, last of all, it's again thinking about um, your lectures, your seminars, as this learning experience. 
Um, and every week is a chance to kind of gain new information, gain feedback on how you should be doing things. So really try and take that advice on board. Um, you know, it's, it's how you progress in terms of your, your learning and how your, and your skill, academic skills as well. Um, so do kind of take that advice and, and feedback on board. Um, and of course, at this point, you're probably thinking about um, looking at some of the academic policies like academic integrity, you know, you might be looking at assessments, all those key questions around what's the late penalty and how do I get an extension and all of those sorts of things. So just very quickly before I go to our student reps and our panel, we have about 11 student reps in our college representing various different degrees and areas. Um, we've got three of them here today um, and hopefully we'll add in some more information onto the Haas Flow site which will be distributed next week. Um, so you'll get to know who your student reps are. But also we've got some sort of more specific Haas related associations and clubs that you might want to get involved in. So for example, we've got the Art Students Association which is a new kind of club that we're um, developing at the moment broader so we can hopefully get everyone kind of involved and in, engaged in this sort of community and get everyone, you know, mingling, mixing, getting to know one another. Okay, so at this point I am going to welcome our panel up. So we've got three lovely students. So we've got Claire, who is in the red chair, <laughs> um, and Claire is doing a combined degree, which is Tourism and Events and Bachelor of Arts with Languages and History. And then we've got Imogen in the middle, who is doing Archaeology. And then very end there, we've got Olivia, who is doing an Arts degree, Higher Achiever with History and English. So basically the point of this session, and we've got ooh, a good 20 minutes, which is great, um, to ask them any questions. So. You can add some questions to the live Q&A box, if you like, or for those of you in the room, you can simply pop your hand up. Um, but it's really a chance to ask these guys, you know, based on their experience of how they found things. So I do have some predetermined questions, so I can kick start while you're thinking about some, some questions yourselves. Um, so I'm going to start with a, a very broad question which is what was your first day at uni like? So we'll start with you, Claire. My first day. Well, I'm currently in fourth year. So with a combined degree, I'm doing four years instead of three as my undergrad. So my first year was 2019. And so just the year before COVID started. And I think my first day, I was a bit, I had come to O-Week, so I sort of knew my way around a little bit, but I sort of took some time to try and find my class or my, I think it might have been this lecture theatre actually, was one of my first classes. And I think it was a tourism one. So, yeah, my first day, it was a bit overwhelming. I was still not used to campus. It's so big. I still don't know the other side of the lake that well. <laughs> but um, I think it went, it went all right. It was just, it's very overwhelming at first, I will say that. Um, I'm in the same boat as Claire in that my degree is going for four years instead of three because I added a Bachelor of Letters um, on there as well. So my first day of uni is a little bit fuzzy, but I do remember being mostly excited um, because I'd been to O-Week and I'd gone to everything at O-Week to try and get the best sort of grip on what I was going to be doing at uni. Um, managed to find most of my classes without getting lost, which was really great, um, and even I think even in my first class managed to actually talk to a few people who I then for the next three years was studying with and hanging out with and yeah, it was really good. It was overwhelming but I think when you get that, that first day out of the way, it's like ripping the band-aid off and you're like, oh yeah, this is, this is doable. I can do this. Again, similar. I started in 2020, so right before we all went into lockdown and online. Um, I wasn't too familiar with where my classes were, so I sort of followed a big crowd that looked like they knew where they were going and I did end up where I was meant to be, so that was good. I remember getting to my first classes, especially the High Achievers one, and everyone seemed like they knew what they were talking about. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing here. 
how am I going to get through this? And then, you know, it's just, it's very overwhelming and you feel like, you know, university is this big thing and you have to, you know, achieve this high standard um, from the very beginning, but that's not true at all, I think. And you'll find that your peers are in the same boat. So, yeah, don't, you know, don't worry too much. Perfect. Any questions? One's just been answered, but we can okay. do any Anyone other in one. the room? I, well, I'll continue with my questions <laughs> and see if anything pops out at you. Um, do you have any studying tips or hacks that you've come across over the last two or three years? Anything that helps? Um, I would definitely utilise the free diary that you can get from FUSA. So this year I bought my own diary because it was very pretty, so I, was, I just bought it. But um, I've been using the FUSA diary. It's very useful because it's already got all the university dates in it. You can use it to put in your assessments and stuff, and I use different coloured pens like, okay, this is an assignment, this is a test, and there's, because I, um, I study Spanish, so there's lots of small little tests that come along, so you need to keep track of those so you don't get too lost. But also um, making sure that you can utilise the library resources online, like they have a citation tool, which is extremely, extremely useful. Sometimes you do need to go back and check it, make sure it's in the right format. But like using the tools that are available is something that is really useful here at Flinders, I'd say. Um, my number one tip, especially if you're doing archaeology, is if you're taking notes from something that you are reading, write down the page number next to the thing that you're taking, uh, writing notes down in your book. Because my first essay, I'd taken all these notes from all these different papers and I was super proud of myself. And then I realised I had to reference them all in the text and I had to reread every single paper to find the page number that the um, reference was from. So definitely do that as you're writing your notes. Saves you a lot of time. Same thing, invest in a good diary. So I'll mark out when all my assignments are due so I know when they're coming up and where my classes are. Um, and, um, yeah, figuring out a good note-taking system. Everyone's different. So you'll hear people have different systems. I like putting the article reference at the top and then writing the notes and adding page numbers as I go and then it's easy to look back but that might not work for you. Um, and I think making sure that you're keeping up with your lectures and you're taking good notes throughout the semester because there's nothing worse than getting to the end of semester and you haven't watched six lectures and you have a test at the end of the week and then you have to watch all of them. It's, it's not a good feeling. So, you know, try and stay on top of um, your classes. As, as tempting as it is to watch the next episode on Netflix, <laughs> Good to keep up with your classes, that's for sure. Because um, I think that has been quite a source of um, anxiety, I think, over the last little while of people, you know, just getting behind. And once you get behind, it, it, it is a bit tricky to catch up again. Yeah, perfect. Um, so our next question, are you working and studying at the same time? And if so, how do you manage that balance? Um, well, yes, I'm currently a student ambassador here at Flinders, so I work with the Education Pathways team and the Student Recruitment Office to basically go out to schools, like high schools, and give presentations about like careers and stuff like that, and I also do campus tours, and I'm also, I mean, it's not paid, but I'm also a student rep for the tourism course, so that means like people who are doing tourism can come to me about if they're worried about their topic, um, more like academically, if they're worried about assessments not being spaced out or something, they can come to me about that. But um, for balance-wise, uh, the great thing about being a student ambassador currently is that it's really flexible and you can put in your availability and then they can... So I leave the, class, I leave the days that I have classes completely unavailable so I don't have to worry about trying to work on the same day that I have classes because that's just too much for me. But um, it is possible to study, work, study, <laughs> balance, work and study at the same time. But I could understand that it could be difficult if you've got a less flexible job than I've got. Uh, yeah, so I work two jobs. I work in hospitality and I also teach um, roller skating. 
two nights a week, uh, as well as studying. I'm also a student rep, as well as being a treasurer on one of the committees. Um, so there is a lot of stuff that I have going on. I also play an extracurricular sport. So I'm, I'm a very busy person, but I think the main thing to remember is that you need to you keep on top of those things. So if you have, um, you know, essays and things due, but you also have events within extracurricular things, make sure you've got those written down. I have a big whiteboard in my kitchen where I put my entire month worth of things. So I'll have my work shifts, my days that I need to be at uni, um, you know, training for sport, all that kind of stuff all listed out so I know when I need to plan my time and how to schedule my life. It doesn't always work. Uh, I was actually supposed to be at work today, but I managed to get that shift swap so that I could still be here. Um, so it's just a matter of keeping on top of it and making sure that you can sometimes make concessions and miss out on things if you have to. Sort of in the same boat as Claire, I work in the Careers and Employability Office up at Flinders here. And they've got um, good resources as well if you're ever interested in um, looking at potential career paths. You can go on Career Hub, which you'll find on your Okta dashboard, and they've got resources to create your resume or cover letters um, if you need advice. Um, but, yeah, I've it, – it, it's quite flexible with my timetable, so um, I work on days that I don't have classes – but um, it is tricky striking that balance between work and study because study does feed into your personal life quite a lot and if you don't create those boundaries, you'll find yourself up late um, working on assignments and you, you'll get burnt out quite quickly. So I think it's important to create those boundaries and say, okay, I'm going to work on this essay from one to four and then I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to watch that lecture from six to seven and then that's it for the night. So just make sure that you're balancing your personal life, your work and your study properly. Perfect. Um, how about something a little bit more practical? What are some of your favourite studying spots on campus? Well, I can't give them all away, otherwise they'll get busy. <laughs> Um, one place I really do like to go, I like, I love going to the library. So I like the first level doesn't have any books and then the second level has books and so does the third level. And then the level below that is Flinders Connect. There's also study areas there, but I really like just the sort of the first level of the library because there's all these computers and it's a social area. So you can, you're allowed to talk so you can, um, if you've got a lot of group work, which I do in the tourism degree, um, you can meet up with your group there. You can book a study room. Or you, even if you're just by yourself and you want to book a study room, you can do that. So I really like the library. Also just the hub in general. There's lo lots of little just chairs with a table. That's all you really need. If you've got a laptop, you can just go there. But often I had, a, I had an issue connecting my laptop to the Wi-Fi for most of last semester. So I ended up going to the uni library and just using the computers there a lot. So that's one of my favourite spots. And you're allowed to have the drink and food in there too. So... Uh, my favourite spot to study is actually in my house um, because I have my office set up exactly the way I want it and I have music and I can, you know, go and get a cup of tea, do whatever I need to do and I'm not bothering anyone. But if I'm at uni, I like to study on the second floor because you have a really nice view out over, um, like, the lawn area and all the tables are single-person tables, but they're quite big. So you can sort of spread out if you need to and you don't have to worry about getting in anyone's way. I love the library, either second level or if you want l lots of peace and quiet, you go to the third level and again, you've got the books on one side and you've got a nice view of the plaza on the other. So it seems like the library is the place to go. <laughs> it's a great place for it. Um, so if you are sort of experiencing any issues that are, are affecting your studies, what do you do? Cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine too, yep. yep. You can cry and then once you finish crying, you can, um, there are lots of support services here at Flinders. So there's free counselling and you can also, there's online student services. So for example, sometimes I struggle with referencing. So I go to the student services, I go to the referencing thing and I get to the one that I need. Um, and then you cry again. 
and then you finish your assignment. So, <laughs> but yeah, there's lots of there's lots of support services available, and it's all in the online on the t on the website about student support and, and all that. But yeah, crying is okay. Uh, yeah, I second that. Crying is definitely okay. I do another thing at home called procrastic cleaning, where if I get very stressed, I clean the whole house. Um, helps me relax. So that's another good option. Um, I will say the free counselling service here is really good. Um, I've definitely utilised it over my time here at Flinders and I've found it's really beneficial. Another thing that seems really scary, but I mean, I don't know every single lecturer, but all of my lecturers are lovely. Um, if you're having trouble with an assignment or you're not sure you're going to make the due date, send them an email. As long as it's professionally worded and you don't just email them with an audible shriek, <laughs> they are very accommodating and they understand that we're all human and life happens and we have different commitments and things like that. So as long as you're honest and upfront about what's going on with your lecturers, nine times out of ten they're just going to be like, yep, no worries, just get it to me when you can. So... Yeah, there's a lot of support services. I think also creating a community with your peers as well helps. I remember in first year we all went online and we didn't really know anyone and you felt quite isolated. So um, I think being back in person, it's good to, you know, get to know who's in your classes and sort of see how they're going and check up on each other. And, yeah, don't be afraid to contact your topic coordinators or tutors. They're, um, they are quite scary or daunting at first but they're they're gen they're genuinely nice people and they're there to help you so if you have any issues with assignments or you feel like you're not progressing as you should don't be afraid to reach out to them because they're they're really helpful um one thing that i did find useful as well apart from crying um with my Spanish class, because there's so little of us, we actually made like a group chat on Messenger. And so that was actually really useful. So you can just ask each other questions if you don't want to bother the, well, bother the, um, the teacher. And often someone will have the answer within your peer group. So it's, it is, can be really good and important to talk to people in your class and try and make friends, even though it can be a bit daunting. Don't worry, everyone is as afraid as you are. Um, any other questions from the crowd? If you don't want to ask it, that's, oh, we do have a question. Um, <laughs> general, uh, when I started looking at all the languages and So just to quickly repeat for the, the audience online, <laughs> just yeah. the mic. Um, so the questions around number of study hours per topic yeah. and whether that estimate of, I think it's 135 hours per topic is accurate or not. I would say what you put in is what you get out. So I probably should put in a few more hours per topic, but I, I do what I can. So for ex and to some topics do need more hours than others. So for example, a history topic, there's a lot of reading. So you do have to put in time and a bit of effort to understand those readings because you will be talking about them in tutorial. But sometimes you can forego that. For example, my Spanish topics, when you're doing a language class, it does require a lot of hours, especially if you're doing a lot of exercises and stuff. So I sometimes I would have to put more energy into my Spanish than my history or um, and more effort into understanding maybe a tourism concept that I didn't understand then because I understand history quite well. So that sort of took a back burner while I focused on more topics that I didn't understand. So it's, it's sort of balancing and putting your energy where you really need to. It may mean that maybe your grade won't be as good in your other topic, but it means that you're sort of understanding that other topic better. So it's again, about balance, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Um, coming from archaeology, which has also got quite a large volume of readings, and some of them are, were written in, like, the 
hundreds, so they're very hard to read and understand. Um, make sure that you actually understand what you need each week first. So have a look at what's required of you to learn. And when you're doing your readings, you don't have to read every single word and remember every single word. It's about the theme. So you can um, sort of scan the readings and make sure that you're looking for things that are actually relevant because a lot of the time in papers they have bits of the relevant information and then there's also lots of waffle and other things in there and opinions and stuff that's interesting if you're using it for an essay but if you're using it for the tutorial it's it's not necessary so um, skim the readings first as well you can read the abstract and the conclusion and that will normally have most of the information in there and then if you're interested in it I would go more in depth with it yeah I think it sometimes depends on your topics and types of assessments so like history and even English research essays take a long time because you have to do a lot of reading and preparation for that and then you have to do the writing. Um, if you have a shorter assessment, um, it takes less preparation but I think, yeah, the readings are what probably take the most time each week. Um, so, again, it is what you put in. So, you can do less hours or you can do more. Just, you know, strike that balance and find what works for you. Um, but, yeah, make sure you are dedicating time each week to watch the content and do the readings and go to classes so you know what's going on. Okay, perfect. Um, so we might close the session there as we're about on time. Um, so thank you very much to Claire, Imogen and Olivia for joining us today. Um, and thank you guys for coming, both those online and in here face to face. Um, and just a reminder, if you are joining the Creative Arts and TAFE session, that's going to be in here in a couple of minutes, literally. Um, and then you can join us in the college front afterwards for a light lunch. Those of you who are not attending this session, you're welcome to come, well, actually, do come along. I'm not saying welcome to, do come along to, with us to the college front for a little bit of a light lunch and a bit of a chance to have a bit of a chat and get to know one another a little bit more. And then from there, if you are attending the um, Creative Arts and CDW feed session, we'll show you where to go from there for that session at 12.30. So thank you very much, everyone. Are you in any of the other sessions? No, I'm going straight to the slow session. Oh, okay. Um, that is a good question. Um, what's, the, what's the question, sorry? Just going to the flow. Um, that one's up, uh, sorry, downstairs. Downstairs the flow now. Session. Yeah. yeah. And then um, straight up after when you're yeah. done to the college front. If there's, it's yeah, a light lunch, if there's food there, it's all yours. <laughs> I'm Vice Chancellor Colin Sterling.
presented you, read of you. Presented you is what I meant. I think that's it. Right? Uh, no, yep, if you go down. Oh. Yep, you were there. It's a little creepy. So Five oh, little you notes ago. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. Right Sorry. Yep. I've just got a couple. There's nothing outrageous. But so you don't really want the notes, right? Just the letters? No. Worst comes to worst, I'll cry. Okay. <laughs> I think what we need is. Extend. Not this one. Oh yeah, I could I could think of the notes on. Recent copy. Uh, yes. Okay. Yep, so got it. What Great. we'll do here is make this a design sheet, yep. a slideshow. Yep, and then wonderful. I'm just going to paste this yes, that's right. so right. I'll write this up for you. And should I start right away? Yep. yep. Okay, uh, hello to our very, very intimate group of people here. Good morning and thank you for turning up. Um, I'm going to have to hold this. The uh, little spring seems to have broken, so I'm going to hold this like a, a game show host and, uh, and speak that way. Um, so, first of all, welcome to this information session uh, from this college, Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. This session, of course, is specific to a series of degrees um, that I'll introduce you to in a moment. I'd like to start with an acknowledgement of country and to say that we pay our respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Ghana people, and that we pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. The session you've come to is for information about our dual award degrees that we present with our partners at, at TAFE SA. Um, they are, in particular, the Bachelor of Creative Arts in Fashion, Costume Design, Visual Arts and Drama, and, um, uh, and Dance. I'm sorry. Oh, good, good, good God, Dance. Yes, sorry. I've taken my glasses off, which wasn't a good move. Um, and <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Um, and these are very unique degrees in that they're uh, taught by um, creative professionals and academics at both campuses and you of course as you probably know end up with two awards quite literally when you um, exit these degrees so you'll end up with a Bachelor of Creative Arts from Flinders um, and a, uh, a TAFE qualification in your particular specialization from from TAFE so more about that in a moment I will put my glasses back on because I actually have some some readers notes here um, okay uh, so you'll notice too that this uh, slide is similar to um, one that was uh, covered in Eliza's presentation. So the session today is designed to be quite simple. We know you're being bombarded with information uh, all day. So we want to give you in this session brief and quite specific information. I'll introduce one of my TAFE colleagues, Helen Jansen, um, who is <laughs> just there. Uh, please, please come in guys, please come and take a seat. Um, I'll explain some of your, uh, explain the Flinders study planner and talk a bit about enrolment and how to get help. Okay. Um, I should have introduced myself as well. Um, my name's Dr. Nick Prescott. I am the coordinator of the uh, Bachelor of Creative Arts and Creative Industries degrees and I teach into the core topics in those degrees as well and have done for some time. So I'm very proud of the relationships we have with our wonderful colleagues at TAFE and proud of these fantastic degrees. So um, 
Unfortunately, Sean Parsonage, who's the educational manager at TAFE, is unwell today and isn't able to be here. But um, the wonderful Helen Jansen, who teaches into the fashion, fashion and costume design degrees, is here. So um, if you have specific questions about those degrees, I'm sure she'll be able to have a chat with you later when we go out into the um, courtyard to have a bite to eat. OK. Um, this, uh, you, you, the next series of slides, I'll, go, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how all this works. So a dual award degree, as I said, um, you exit the degree with both, a, for example, a Diploma of Applied Fashion and Design, Merchandising and a Bachelor of Creative Arts degree. So you have two qualifications when you finish studying a dual award degree, um, which, is, which is, I think, pretty unique in um, the educational uh, uh, environment here in South Australia. And you're taught by staff and creative arts practitioners at both campuses, the TAFE campuses in town and at Flinders, the Flinders campus here at Bedford Park. We also teach some topics at Flinders in the city in Victoria Square. Now, you can begin the award, these degrees rather, in two different ways. Um, one is, I guess, the traditional way where you start right from the beginning and decide you want to study a dual award degree in a particular area. Um, the other opportunity to enter the degrees is through the VET pathway, vocational education and training pathway. Hi, guys. Please, please come and take a seat. Um, which is a way of sort of moving sideways into the dual award program after initial period of study. And it's based on credit gained for the BCA based on previously completed topics at, at TAFE. Okay, so this is the complex looking part. And these are your study planners. They tell you uh, essentially the topics that you'll be studying. Most of the detail you notice is about the, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps some people just came into the wrong session. Um, uh, you'll, you'll notice that most of the detail here is from the Flinders side, um, but the TAFE enrolment parts are essentially your kind of, if I'm not generalising too much, Helen, sort of your studio time. It's where you're working intensively on your pra the practical part of your degree. Um, so if you're working in visual arts, for example, um, uh, you'll be doing painting, photography, sculpture, all sorts of things. Here, as we are looking at the fashion slide, um, you're working on uh, fabrics, cutting, designing, etc., etc. And of course, the histories of all of these different forms as you go along. So there's a different and equally complex looking enrolment planner for each of the uh, dual award degrees. Um, there you can see costume design, then visual arts, and the visual arts one is filled in with a lot of information because I teach the visual arts students, for example, in one of the core topics, and I know that their uh, schedule is extremely filled with, uh, is extremely full rather, of all sorts of different um, elements of, of art history and art practice um, that makes it difficult for me to catch them at, a, at the right time to, to um, get them into my core topic. Anyway, um, these are essentially, this is information for you about what you'll be studying in these degrees and as always, um, you can, if you have a question about any of this, you can submit an Ask Flinders request or indeed you could talk to Annie and Joe after this session. Now there's Annie Tavener with the glasses and next to her, Joe Willis. And in front of them both in the wonderful purple top, Carolyn Cousins. Um, these are our amazing professional staff here at Flinders who look after these degrees. And if you have, as I sometimes do, particularly curly questions about enrolments or credits for various topics, I always go to Annie and Joe and Carolyn to get the answers. Um, so, uh, yes. Now, for the fashion one, well, going back for a sec, um, this is an updated version. Now, you may have received a different version of this in error. Um, please refer to this one. These slides will all be sent to you afterwards and made, made available for you afterwards, so you don't need to feverishly take notes. Um, so there are some slight amendments, and this is the uh, up-to-date um, copy. OK. Where to go for help? Now, I said earlier on this would be a, a brief presentation because we know that 
a lot of what you do at orientation days and open days like this is just feel like you're being absolutely showered with information that you are struggling to kind of compartmentalise and keep up with. We don't want to do that to you. Um, one of the things that is very good about the Flinders system, um, I could make a joke there about the things that aren't good about the Flinders system, but I won't. Um, it's just the behind the scenes stuff that we get to see, don't worry. Um, if, you, if you submit an Ask Flinders request for almost anything, um, you, will be, you will have that request channeled to the right person to answer the question. So um, if you want to, if you studied in another institution or at Flinders University in previous years, you can apply to have that study recognised as credit toward your new program, um, which could reduce the length of time required to complete your qualification. Um, all Flinders students have an email account. Please do use your Flinders email account when you're corresponding with Joel or Annie or myself. Um, because, you know, Gmail accounts and so on often end up in our spam folders. Please do use your Flinders account to, to um, correspond with us. Um, it's there for you to use, as is your OneDrive link and all that sort of stuff through the Okta page. Um, so, uh, essentially, that's, that's kind of it um, f as far as information from me. Um, if you have questions, we are in a little while... I've actually gone quite quickly, haven't I? Um, in a little while, we've uh, we've got lunch for you out in the. Uh, it's at the college. Oh, right. Okay. It's changed from the from rather than the chilly courtyard at the college front office, which is just a few steps away, and we can guide you there. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them, or to point you to the right person to answer them. Okay. Wow, Helen, these are they're almost all your people. And can I ask what you're studying? I'm doing fashion. Into fashion as well. Okay. Yep. Wow. Well, you'll be able to have a fantastic conversation with Helen over over a bite to eat. Um, so, look, I'm, I'm the guy you come to if you have sort of cross-institutional issues, if you want to get credit for something at Flinders, for something you've done elsewhere, um, if you've got problems with the sort of enrolment templates in general, there are questions that Annie and Joe and Carolyn can help you with. Um, if you have any other kind of um, life issue or problem accessing um, Flinders support services, I can help you with those sorts of things as well. So we're all here to help. That's, that's very much part of what, what we do. Um, as well as teaching into the degrees, we're very much um, interested in, in helping you through them and helping you get as much as you can out of them. So please don't ever feel uh, backward about coming forward. Please, please do come and talk to us where none of us will I don't think any of us are scary. I mean, I've got scary hair, but that's about it. Um, so uh, please come and talk to us about anything you, any questions you have. There are no silly questions. Um, there are lots of support mechanisms at both campuses and, um, and we will help you avail yourselves of those if you need to at any point. So thank you so much. Thank you for your attention. And I'm kind of sort of sorry I blasted through so quickly, but we've got Lisa. Yeah, of course, Helen. Yes, yeah. certainly. Um, yep. Yeah. What Helen's saying is absolutely right. There are um, the the prefixes to your topics, um, and I don't know where I need to look for the people online up there. I think um, the prefixes to your topics give you um, a clue as to where they're they're taught. So the C R E A prefixes, the crea creative arts topics. Um, some of the core topics are taught in at Victoria Square. Most of them are taught here at Bedford Park. But the, for example, FSHN topics are taught at the TAFE campuses in town, at Adelaide College of the Arts and in Curious. Yep. Um, so again, uh, you can always find out details about that by, by simply asking any of us 
and we'll be able to tell you exactly where you need to be. Um, there are we, one of the things we try and do is, where possible, offer um, double uh, dual offerings of the same topics at the different campuses, so that people can not have to travel. For example, uh, the visual arts students I teach in one of the core topics in the degrees, I offer that topic in at Victoria Square as well as here at Bedford Park so that the students who are spending most of their time in town can just zip up to Victoria Square and, and take the topic there. So there, we do a bit of that as well. So we try and make sure that, you know, where you need to be at whatever time and facilitate that appropriately. So remember to look at the prefixes to your topics, get a sense of where they're held, and you'll very quickly get your head around both campuses. Flinders is a bit of a, a labyrinth, um, but uh, mostly when you're here you'll be with lecturers sort of coming here with you, or in Victoria Square, things are very easy to find as they are, as they are at AC Arts as well. So, um, yeah. It also helps with the examination to look after the person without a specific topic and just know that if it says they've done any, if their score is falling but um, related to the content, it's a bit more likely on the tag yep. than Flinders. But, but you'll get your head around that um, and it's more very quickly. That's a good point, yeah. I should mention that as well, yeah. That um, the, there are sort of Flinders-specific questions about enrolment templates and so on, and then there, of course, are topic-specific questions. And you'll get to know all of your topic coordinators very well, um, so you'll be able to learn who to go to but with topic-specific questions. Um, Helen for fashion, me for um, broader creative arts stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the first week or two can be fairly daunting, just getting your head around who runs what and whom to ask about various things, you get the hang of it very quickly. And uh, again, remember, there's no silly question. Please, please ask any of us anything at any point, and we'll do our best to either answer the question or channel you to the right person to answer it. Okay, all right, I think that pretty much does it. Look, thank you very much, people. Um, unless there are any other questions you've thought of in the meantime, um, we're all very happy to, to chat to you. Um, over a bite, so uh, that'll be in 10 minutes or so. Um, um, we'll go and see, see if they've got something for us already. Thank you very much. So please, please, um, if you wait for a sec, we'll turn this off and then we'll lead you up to the Hass front area and have something to eat. Thank you, guys. <laughs>